Hello there, and welcome back to Measure Killer on YouTube. It's Klaus here again, the lead developer of Measure Killer, and today I'll be showing you how to find and remove unused measures from a shared semantic model in the Power BI service. In this example, I'll be using paginated reports and analyzing Excel files in addition to the Power BI reports. Keep in mind that this is part of the premium features of Measure Killer, so a license is required to run the mode that I'm showing you today. So let's do this. Now let's take a look at the following scenario. I want to find out which measures and columns from the weather data set are used not only across its reports, but also paginated reports and downstream semantic models, including their own reports. If I open up the impact analysis, I can see that the weather data set has artifacts in two different workspaces. There is another report in a different workspace called Austria Forecast. And this report is connected to the weather data set by a live connection. There's also the possibility that users are using the Analyze in Excel option, creating an Excel file. Measure Killer can also detect usages in Excel files like this, provided you have the files. So now let's open Measure Killer. After opening Measure Killer, if you already have a license, you'll be able to select the shared model online mode. If you don't, you can either purchase or request a trial, both links in the description. After acquiring a license, just go to License and use one of those two options to enter your license. So now let's go ahead and select the shared model online mode. Now, uh, interactive browser authentication will appear. You can change this method in the settings if by any means the interactive browser authentication does not work. Select your account. Then a new window will appear, listing all of the workspaces that you have access to. This is really important for mode 3, the shared model online for developers. Measure Killer will only search and detect artifacts in workspaces that you have access to. If you want to search the whole tenant, you're going to have to be an admin and use the shared model online for admins. So now let's select our weather data set. I'm going to check it. And here, notice that I didn't select the downstream semantic model. This is not needed because Measure Killer will automatically detect the lineage and add it to the analysis. You can also unmark this box so you don't get the report and page views or the report load times. So now let's click Next. Measure Killer is now building the lineage and it detected artifacts in two workspaces that are connected to the weather data set. First, the adventure works where we have just one single report and the rest are all here. I can uncheck this and Measure Killer will just ignore that workspaces and all artifacts connected to the, we to the weather data set in it. I'm gonna check it because I want to analyze everything. After everything is done, just go to next. Now a new window will pop up with the lineage of the weather data set. Here I can see that the Austria forecast in a different workspace has also been included. You can also see the report views and the average load for each report. They are basically empty because I never opened those reports. I can also add local files by using this button. So analyzing an Excel or any other paginated report or Power BI report files. I can also drag and drop those files. And then I have to select to which semantic model they are connected to. In our example is the weather data set. So I'm going to add all of those files. They have been added to the weather data set. And here I can see that they are listed as local files. Once the lineage and all the local files have been added, 
just hit run. A new window will pop up listing all of the fetched reports, the reports in the Power BI service. If any errors occurred, they will show up here. In our case, all of the six reports have been fetched successfully. After running, you're going to get the results. And they are very similar to the previous modes that we showed in this channel, with the only difference that now we can select the model here. Here on the bottom left, you will see the execution summary with some useful information about your model, including best practices, how much is used, unused, or used by unused. On the right side, you can see the results table. This table lists all of the columns, the measures, and also the report level measures, the measures created within the live reports themselves. You can expand to check where a particular artifact is used. And if this artifact is red, it means that it's unused. If it's yellow, it means that it's only used by unused artifacts. For example, the wind chill column here is only used in a report level measure, which is not used anywhere. You can also use the Tables tab, which is basically the same view as the Results tab, but now you can drill down through the tables and also check if a table is referenced in an artifact. For example, this calendar table is used in Calculation Act. You can also navigate through the report results, which will include all of the reports. Here we'll be able to see the pages, the report level measures, report level filters, and this will include all of the reports, including the local files. In the DAX Expressions tab, you'll be able to search through all of your DAX expressions and also find duplicated DAX expressions. The M Expressions tab is very similar to the DAX Expressions tab. But now you can basically quickly search through all of your M expressions, including tables that are not loaded and even parameters. To remove your unused measures and calculated columns, go to the Kill Dax Artifacts tab. Here you can select the artifacts to remove and then go and press Q to automatically delete them from the semantic model in the Power BI service. Be careful, however, because this will perform an XMLA write operation, and this means that you are not going to be able to download the semantic models file in the future anymore. So be very careful and save a copy if you're going to do this. In this tab, you can also copy a C-sharp script for tabular edit. To remove unused columns, go to the kill columns tab. Here you can select the table to remove unused columns from, and Measure Killer will generate a new M code for you, adding an extra step at the end where it removes the unused columns. Then you can copy the new M code and paste it in the advanced editor in Power Query. If you are not sure how to do this, please watch our previous video on the single report mode of Measure Killer there we explain in detail how to do this exactly. If you're feeling really brave though, you can use the one-click optimization. This will completely remove all of your unused artifacts, including columns, calculated columns, measures, and even tables. This is irreversible though, and you need to be careful. My advice is to make a copy of your semantic model before cleaning it up. Otherwise, you can manually remove the unused artifact. This will also do an XMLA write operation, so you are not going to be able to download the semantic model again. So this is how to optimize and find unused columns and measures 
in your shared semantic model in the Power BI service without having to download the semantic models file and also any of the reports file. We also included analyzing Excel in paginated reports. Those two features are not available in the free version of Measure Killer. So this again requires a license of Measure Killer. Thank you very much for watching this. Please do the YouTube thing that is showing up in the screen right now. And I see you in the next video.